Now let's say that we have added content to Tumblr. We've got maybe three items, five items, whatever. We've got some content. Our content then is to try to entice people to follow us. So this is one of the tactics that if you take the social media class, we go into detail there also, which is to interact with people, to be social, to get social. So uh, if you go back to the dashboard, wherever you're at, just so that we can go back to the dashboard, click on the little house, back on the dashboard, and we're going to use search. Search is one of the most powerful features of any social network, but it's also maybe the most overlooked because you think, how can, how can I find people? How can I interact with people? Well, search should s sound obvious, but it might not be obvious until you actually do it. So here under the dashboard, at the very top, you've got search Tumblr. So here is where you can start to either explore, which is they're going to guide you to things that you might like, or you can take control of your own search and then type a keyword, for example, cookies. As I start typing, it might suggest a bunch of things such as cookies and cream, Oreo cookies, out of cookies, or just cookies. It might suggest individual blogs. So this is a possible way for you to get followers. These keywords that people might search for, you can incorporate them into the title of your blog or into the address of your blog. And notice, if someone were to type cookies, it's a very limited amount of results right here. But there's cuckoo for cookies, cookies.tumblr.com, cookies there, mulberry cookies, and cookies and apple juice. Um, so the point is that if there's a keyword or two that you can put into your, into your title, that's useful. You can even put it into your address. And I've seen um, very long Tumblr names, right? There was awesome people hanging out together, .tumblr.com. So that Tumblr name could be pretty long. And if you use a keyword, you might get found. Okay, let's say I'm going to ignore the blogs for the moment. I'm typing in a keyword, maybe one of these I'm going to look at, chocolate chip cookies. Okay, I'll click there. And any of these searches that you do, what will then happen is you'll get some blog results at the top, most likely. And then you'll also get actual results. The anatomy of the search page is actually very dense because we can filter this. Recommended for us, trended, staff picks, GIFs. I can focus on animated GIFs of cookies. Turn that on. Well, actually, sorry. That top is really just all the topics. Uh, at the very top, uh, ignore that for a moment. These are just everything about Tumblr. Um, what I meant was down here, I've searched a particular keyword and it's got related. Maybe you mean dessert, maybe you need food, recipe, baking, sweets. What's the difference between the top row that you said was blogs and the stuff below it? Is, you said it's what? Are you saying this top row up here and then this row right here? Yeah, this is these are people's blogs. And these down here are actual posts. So you might find a particular blog that you see right away and okay, I'll follow them. Uh, most likely what you'll do is you'll go to the second section of posts, and here's where it says most show me the results most popular, most recent, filter them by text, photo, video, etc. This is what I was looking for. So within the post section, right below the blogs, this is where then I can filter the results. I'll leave these alone for the moment. Most popular and any kind of post. The point is, I'm going to see here, sweet tooth girl, intense food cravings, huff post taste. All of these are blogs on Tumblr. This one's funny. This literally, this literally, what I'm pointing to, these are the blogs. The name is the blog. This is a post. This account, this blog, posted this post. 
So this one's funny here because they're called food with a few zeros and O's in there. But we've got vegan yummies, yummy food. Notice all of these have the easy follow, follow, follow. And the actual post, this is caramel sea salt chocolate chip cookies with some hashtags. And then this one says 2,229 notes. This one says 2,183 notes. Notes. That's Tumblr's um, word for the activity on a post. How many likes and retweets and all of that, the, those are notes. They're all collected together. So this one has 1,531 notes. There might have been some favorites, some retweets, some replies, all together. Yes? If I was to reblog the hot fudge stuff chocolate chip, do those 1,531 notes go with it? Yes. And then if someone goes back to the original site and says they like it, the, the number on my site increased? Mm -hmm. oh, really? This is all interrelated. It's all related. Um, so all of this it automatically has a link back to the original. These numbers increase. It's just all spreading. And people who like it from your site make it increase. Yes. Uh -huh. So let's say just to put that into practice, that, that's what I was getting at. That okay. we're doing no, that's fine. We're getting we're searching. We're searching for content, and I could select, okay, nom food, I can click follow, so now I follow them. I could click on some other one, intense food cravings, follow. The point of this, and if you take my social media class, you'll hear it again there. One way for you to get followers is for you to follow accounts. You give what you get, oftentimes, in social media. If I'm choosing to follow accounts, like 3milk, 3Milk just got a notification up on their little lightning bolt that says, Victor's Bakery just followed you. So then they can say, who's Victor's Bakery? They'll go to my profile, they'll see all the cool stuff I posted, they might click follow me. So that's why I, I said you should post some stuff. People are not going to follow you if they see nothing on your account. Even if you have a well-written biography and a background picture, who cares? It's the content. What are you posting? That's a funny gif. That's a good recipe. That's a nice link. Let me follow you. I want to see your stuff. So I'm making people aware of my site here simply by following Food52. I'll follow them. So if I click follow, I follow them. Now be careful here. This is some of these quirks of Tumblr are kind of weird. If you hover over the name, you get the word follow. And if you click the word follow, it follows. But if you click the name, you get a preview of their posts, which you might want to do to fully see, do I really want to follow them? What's, what are they actually posting? So if you click on their name, you get a preview. If you click on the word follow, you follow. And notice if you just hover over their name, you also get a little pop-up with a little bit of a preview as well. So Foo52, if I hover over them, I get their picture, I get their logo, and it says helping people become better, smarter, ha, something. And they give you space to write, but that cuts off very quickly. If you click their name, then you get the preview on the side. Helping people become better, smarter, happier cooks. We get a preview automatically, yeah. As, as long as you've added some posts, now when someone clicks on our name, they will see our preview. Okay, so you can, you can do follows. Some amount of those will follow you back. It's never really going to be one-to-one, -one. meaning if you followed 100 accounts right now, there's no guarantee that 100 of them will follow you back. Maybe 70 of them, maybe 50 of them, maybe 20 of them, maybe 5 of them. You never know. So following accounts for you to get followers, it's a tactic. It's not perhaps the best tactic, but it's a tactic. Here is another tactic that might work a little better. 
let's check out who are all of these people adding notes. This might be a better tactic to follow those people because they took the time to like, to reply, to retweet, uh, reblog, so they might care about what I'm about too. So anywhere that you see any result here, click where it says notes, whatever notes yours has. Click notes. So Cat Vane's liked this. Chloe Delange reblogged this. Dreaming of Starry Nights reblogged this. So you might see some that say like this, reblog this, commented on this, etc. The point is, these accounts here, Angel Blossom, I am Erica Rodriguez, these ones perhaps I want to follow because these could be accounts that are actually active, want to follow stuff, want to see your stuff. Because I'm searching for stuff related to my website. I'm searching for cookies, I'm searching for pastries, I'm searching for baking recipes. In theory, these are also interested in those things because they liked stuff that I liked. So follow accounts that like the stuff that you like. That's another social media strategy to get followers. A little more effort would be, instead of blindly following, a little more effort and maybe better results would be to actually click on their name to get the preview to see, okay, oops, parental advisory, explicit content. Maybe I don't want to follow them. <laughs> But uh, what about this one over here? The girliest. So again, I look at their stuff and then decide if I want to uh, follow them or not. The follow button is very easy there, but you might follow those that you actually didn't really want to. You can always unfollow. I'll show you how in a moment. But um, this is one. This is another way to build an audience on Tumblr on Twitter, on Pinterest, basically on all the social networks. Instagram, the point is to be social on a social network, to interact with those that are already being active, to follow accounts, to reply to people's content, to start a conversation. I just said this uh, today or yesterday to one of my other classes uh, at Southwestern College uh, for other social media stuff. Uh, I said, yeah, you're going you're gonna to start to interact with random people. That sounds scary. But didn't you have to uh, make a move uh, when you went to elementary school? You didn't have any friends. How did you make a friend? You started to talk that kid on, to, to that kid on the swing, and now you have a friend. That happens to you nowadays also. You talk to someone maybe in this class that you didn't know, a random person. You talk to them, now you're a friend. You have a connection. You're going to do the same thing on social media. You want to get rid of that shyness, especially if you're going to be a company on social media. You want to try to interact with people and yes, sometimes, once in a while, one percent of the time maybe someone will reply, who are you? Leave me alone. No problem. There's a million other people to interact with that will not be mean. Uh, I, honestly, in the years that I've been doing this, it's very, been very few times, especially doing it for businesses, that someone says like, leave me alone, you're some sort of company. And if it does, great, just move on. Don't let it don't let it get to you. It's usually going to be if you are interacting with people that care about what you care about, there's a connection, there's something in common, then probably you will get some follow or reply or something. M&M ice cream cookie sandwiches. So again, who's writing notes? Who's Beanie Pie? Click there. Haha, <laughs> me too. Beanie's blog of silly nonsense. So I can decide. I can decide to follow. And so this works on Tumblr and all the networks, but it takes effort, obviously. All of this stuff takes some effort. It doesn't happen automatically unless you've already got a built in fan base. If you're Justin Bieber and you open a Twitter account, then you get a thousand followers in the first hour because you already have that, that fan base. Why do you think you see, for example, at our college or at a favorite restaurant that you visit or wherever, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, join us on Instagram. They have some 
followers in real life already that then they want to translate over to social media. A company wants followers on social media because then they have a captive audience. That's another tenet that we talk about in the social media class, a preview. You want followers because that's your captive audience so that when you post a new blog post, when you add something new to Instagram, your people that care about it will see it and maybe act upon it. Okay, let's go to another topic. This one is making us all very hungry. So let's just go to... Yes? Okay, when you clicked on the... Before when you started clicking followers, and then you said, I, I, I need to check and see who you're following first. And you start opening up and one of one said parental advisory. Mm -hmm. How does how does that affect you negatively if you're following something and you, you you didn't go in and look at it first, you just started clicking like you did in the beginning? The way it might be negative is because whenever you select follow and you go back to your dashboard, you're gonna see the posts of everyone that you followed. Mm -hmm. So if you followed an account with stuff that you don't want to see, you're going to see it on your dashboard. Okay. Oh, I got you. Okay. So when you follow, you give permission. There's the I, I followed Three Milk, so yeah. that's the latest thing that Three Milk just posted. So we, we did we did a search up there. Uh, we can look at the this little compass to explore, and that's just going to show you like all the hot stuff or interesting stuff that's happening on 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 Tumblr at the moment. Under explore, this is you know everything that's on Tumblr, which may or may not be uh, useful. Although here pancakes have many uses, such as bookmarks. No, oh, that's from Denny's. See, Denny's is on Tumblr. So I would look at the at the accounts of big companies to get maybe inspiration uh, of what content to post. I'm looking at a post and at the bottom it says view on WordPress. So so we can yeah, because they might only put a little preview of it on Tumblr, because again, it's shorter attention spans, and then the full blog post on WordPress. So that's how you okay. can use both. Did we look at that already? How, how to do, that, that's the thing where I keep making a link. That's a link. Exactly. Make a link to WordPress, and it says view on WordPress, or we would have to tell it to say view on WordPress. The link that you take from your WordPress and add on Tumblr is all you need. Yes. So, so when you are clicking on the followers and their post, their, their information is posted on yours. Um, how often should you do that so that because you because you were saying that if you're if you're doing it too often by posting different pictures, then um, then that might be a negative. But if you're if you're clicking on followers and they're posting on yours, should you do that on a regular basis so that you can get more followers? Yeah, uh, you want to spend some time posting your content. You want to spend some other time following new accounts. Vary it up a little bit. At a certain point, it's sort of like a snowball. Yeah. It's small and it's going to get bigger with momentum. Yeah. So you could spend, you know, one day, you know, 30 minutes or whatever, 
um, spending time just to follow accounts. Okay. Then tomorrow, post a new picture. Okay. Then in two days, spend another 10 minutes, follow some more accounts. Yes. Okay. And then that's going to, popularity breeds popularity. Yes. The snowball grows, and then you get more followers. Gotcha. As you use Tumblr more, and and, and follow and like and all of that, you're going to then start to get recommended blogs by Tumblr. So for example, cutest desserts, and I could follow them. And then eventually you will be listed here as well. You will be recommended to others. Once you start posting stuff and people search for those keywords and such, you'll start to show up to people under recommended as well. So you post, like you were talking earlier about in the queue, so you have all, like say you have a hundred things in your queue, and you set it up so that one posts every single day. Mm -hmm. So now, 99 days later, you have 99 posts that anybody can see any one of those posts? Because mm -hmm. they're all there, so it's not like you'd want to take them and maybe rotate them through again. You could, and that's uh, that's a good, uh, good question. Uh, that, that's uh, re reblogging or repurposing old content. That uh, is a legitimate thing to do. You could take something that you posted 99 days ago and post it again. Uh, same thing in WordPress. Something that you published a year ago, you could publish it again and then maybe update it a little bit. That uh, especially for content that you saw had a lot of reactions. If you repost something that originally got you 12 notes and you post it again, maybe now it'll have 40 notes. Mm -hmm. Or the flip side is you could try to make something that was not that popular into popular, but I think it's going to be behoove, your, behoove you to spend your time maybe reposting stuff that was originally popular because you know it worked once. Right. Okay. So that's a, that's a thing to do, sure. Repurpose old stuff. How old? I can't quite tell you that. It really depends on how much you've posted and how long of a history you've had. If you repost something again that you just did last week, I don't think that's old enough. Mm -hmm. So sometimes this uh, explore uh, item up here might be useful to kind of see, tap into the zeitgeist. And if everyone is sharing something like the rainbow colored icon, maybe that's something you want to do because everyone's doing it. Maybe if people are, are maybe if there's another trend, does anyone remember the planking trend? Planking trend was when was when people would would lie flat like a plank on stuff. You might not have noticed it, but people would lie flat on their desk at work. They would lie flat on an elevator. They would lie flat on a statue. People took it to the next level. Lie flat on the edge of a bridge, and all that stuff. So if you see some trends are happening here, maybe you want to see how can I do that trend in my own way, in my own company, in my own vision. But search is going to be the, the important one also. Up at the top, you're going to search. So for example, I followed Beanie Pie right here, and Beanie Pie reblogged. So, Kazaten right there. Uh, that's what eventually I want. Uh, I want to post cool stuff so that my followers reblog my stuff and it goes to their followers. So, I'm reaching more people than I originally had reached. And then I can click on that. That's another way. If you don't want to follow, I'm going to search again here. Recipe, healthy recipes. I'm going to see content. And if I don't want to follow, another thing that I could do is click the favorite, the little heart. That increased. Now there's 21 notes. So then this account, Superfood Fans, got a notification that says Victor's Bakery favorited. I'll go somewhere else over here. Bravo. Uh, the Tropical Jar. I'll click, I'll click Favorite. Daily Healthy Tips. Click Favorite. I'm giving out these favorites. These accounts are getting the notification that I'm being active. They might then say, who's this Victor's Bakery? They click my icon to see my preview. I like this stuff. Follow at the best. At the worst, they do nothing. In between, they might also like something of mine or reblog it. 
I like that reblog. It makes my stuff spread out to other people. Even if I didn't get a follow, that one might spread out to others, and those others might then follow. So favoriting is also useful. Uh, and then next to that is the is the reblog. If I click to reblog, it pops up like I'm going to post something. It's going to have automatically the link back to the original poster. So there's their item. And then I can add my own commentary, and it says, this came from lovethispick.com, how to make a watermelon cake. So it already comes with the original attribution. That's great for us, because if someone reblogs us, our, our links and such come through to the person that's sharing it. They can, of course, if they want to, go in and delete that. Most people don't. Most people see something and just reblog it. If you want to uh, customize it more, you could. And then so I'm taking someone else's content. I'm adding my own little spin on it. So I could say something like, we offer the same with cantaloupe. And then tag it, uh, I don't know, DIY, do it yourself, or whatever. So then the button says reblog. So I'm taking someone else's content. I'm adding my little bit to it, sharing it to my followers. But the original link is still there embedded. You can't get rid of this one. It's still going to say at the very top, it came from elsewhere. You can get rid of what's in the note, but this will always tell you where it came from, which again, we want that. We want our stuff to be shared around, get found by other people, get new followers, get new retweets, etc. I'll click reblog. And this goes to my 80-20 rule. I don't have something to post every single day. I'm going to browse around what I'm following. I find some cool stuff add it to the queue, post it right now, keeping my blog fresh. And you shouldn't be discouraged if you don't get any results right away. Remember, this is a global social network. Maybe those that you've interacted at the moment, they're in different time zones, and therefore they're not awake at this hour. Who knows? Uh, but the more social you are, the time the, you, you set aside this time uh, to post your own stuff and then to also be social on social media, it'll pay off because then you'll start to get some followers and then followers from followers and reblogs and all of that. So that's why you're hopefully you're you're kind of seeing that yeah, Tumblr is a lot like a social media. It's it's like it reminds me of Pinterest or reminds me of Twitter. It is like that in that short attention spans. Like this recipe it's just a preview. Let me see an example somewhere I just saw uh, like right here, um, healthy desserts, a vegan carrot cake. Well, it starts to, to tell me it's got this reviews or whatever. The complete recipe is here. I click on that and it takes me back to their original website. Where then the whole recipe is there and everything about it. And that also has pin it and tweet it and Tumblr it. Any questions so far? Okay, there's a couple of new, a couple of other nuances to look at. Uh, right now, we were talking about uh, getting uh, getting followers. There's no there's no magic formula to get followers. 
it takes some work. Be wary of these schemes about uh, 5,000 followers for $10. You know, never do those because you will numerically get more followers, but they will be worthless because most likely they will be spam accounts. So you're going to be buying spam accounts that are not going to interact with you meaningfully, not going to buy your product, not going to visit your website and do something meaningful there. So never buy followers, never pay. If something sounds shady or too good to be true, it's probably shady and too good to be true. So it's going to take the work of, of you posting nice content, good content, cool content, useful content, and then taking the time to, doing, to do some search and find people interacting and then you interact with them and follow and favorite and retweet, reblog, and that's going to start to make you aware. It's, it's going to make you, people are be, going to become aware of you and then they can uh, then follow you. So I want to go back to the dashboard. Let's go back to the dashboard. And just as an example, let's say I'm going to add a text post. One thing I haven't said yet, with whatever kind of post that you post, um, you have a little gear at the top right. So for example, if you click text, the gear is right there. If I click that, you have a few options here. Custom URL, I would never really bother with this. This is if you wanted to change the address of your post on Tumblr, you could. It, I don't think it's very useful at all. It's not it's too much work for not nothing really that important. So don't worry about custom URL. What you could do under content source, let's say you have a picture on your phone about your company product. So let's say then I transferred the picture from my phone to my computer. I plugged in the USB cord and I transferred it. So that's that's that. Let's say you've got a picture then on your on your device on your laptop, your computer. You uploaded a picture. Let's say I uploaded a picture right here, penguins, or the desert, and then you go up here to the gear, content source. You can attach here a link back to your website. So I never got that picture from my website, but I can still direct people back to my website by adding a content source link right there. That's hidden under the gear. So when I post this, this will now be an active graphic. If someone hovers their mouse over it, they'll see the, the finger to click, and then they can click on it and it'll go to my website. The content source. Here's another place to set the post date to schedule it. I can let people photo reply. It's off by default, but you might find a use for it. Let's say you're a, a cosmetics company and then you post something and you say, you know, share your makeup success stories. So if you let people upload a photo there, that makes the interaction more graphical, more interesting, but you have to turn it on. And then the text editor I mentioned again. I would leave that one on to rich text because that's the easier way to add bold, italics, and all of that instead of these other ways. Yes. Spammers could, but you do have the ability uh, to go back to your posts and, and, and edit them. I'll show that in a moment. So yeah, you have this control uh, over the stuff other people post. So now if someone visits this 
if someone sees this in their in their dashboard, then um, that will have an active link. If I hover my mouse over it, it's going to go over to the original link. Right there, source, victor.com. When at the moment that you're posting something, so if you click text, it shows up right there. Now, when I uh, post something, I also get the little cog, the little gear right there. So on my posts, I get a, a gear. On others, I don't. So after I post something, if I click that gear, then I have edit and I have delete. So if I want to take back something that I posted, I don't want it public anymore, I can delete it and I can also go back to edit it. Again, this only works for something that you have posted. And you can quickly see a list of everything that you've posted because right now this is mixed in with the other stuff. You can see a list of what you've posted up here on your user icon, your posts. All your posts that are currently active, currently live, show up right there. And it shows I've got two in the queue. So if I click on that, it's only then going to show me what I've posted, not mixed with everything else. The last thing that we'll mention here is, um, well, you have you followed some accounts. Maybe you followed some accounts before I mentioned about vetting them, before checking them out. So now I want to remove. I don't. I don't want to follow some accounts anymore. Uh, several ways to do it, but we can. Here's one way. Again, you click on your user I account there, and then you've got here following. These are all that I'm following. And how do you think you remove a follow? Click on unfollow. Notice you have a few options here as well. Click on that little icon of theirs, ask a question, send fan mail, archive, likes. You can check their likes. Remember there was that option earlier which was on by default to see the likes to see your likes, there's a screen. You can look at their likes. Again, if they liked something, then maybe you'll like it and you can make that connection. So that's found under the, your account icon up here to look at the following. You're following, and then you can check. See, they turned off their likes. Beanie yeah. Pie turned off their likes, but uh, ILNS didn't. That's embarrassed them. So you can also block them if they're harassing you. There's that block button. Under this screen at the top, we have following. This is everyone that you're following. You can look up their names here to, to follow them. If you go to people you know, and then you connect your Facebook or Gmail, it will scan your address book and tell you, oh, these friends of yours are also on Tumblr. Then you can follow them. Uh, that, of course, is completely optional. And maybe you don't want to mix business and pleasure. Maybe your business account, you don't want to follow all of your friends that you've got on Gmail. But you could if you want to, and it's under people you know. And then Spotlight. are going to be the big companies where you can get inspiration and
content. So that was our look at Tumblr. We've gone over pretty much every screen, the big important stuff. It all comes back to content. Tumblr's demographic is the short attention span, the short form version as opposed to WordPress. That's why uh, we talked about it at the end, because now this is a different way of thinking, isn't it? You're not going to be writing a hundred words a month. You're going to be write, you're going to be adding one picture a day or a video every three days, or a quote every day. You're going to be adding something every day on Tumblr to get in on people's, on people's radar. And you're going to be then going in and, and acting more like a social network in that you're going to start to follow accounts. And then some of those will follow you back and your followers will build. And when you post stuff, there will be those accounts then that will like your stuff, reblog it, so one day I want to have 48, 49,000 notes for taking a picture of my cat's paws or my product. People like... So this is our purpose for, for Tumblr. We, we're posting content and we want uh, interaction, we want followers. And the point of all of the social media is to get followers, to then get the, a, a captive audience, to then get them to do something. In the social media class, we go much more into that detail. Yes? Now, this one you just showed that the cat paws, what you're doing could be. The two do not go together, so would you really want to do that? Um, I'm just... Though maybe the hit of the, yeah. the new theme, it has nothing to do with cookies. That's so, true. Um, In this case, I just... Uh, because I followed 3Milk, and 3Milk was about baking and cookies and so forth. And they chose to then retweet this from Ch Chelly Chu. So uh, I might not want to retweet this, reblog this, but it came from someone else that reblogged it. Right. But that's true. How on message do you want to be? All the time? Most of the time? It's up to you. Um, I would not say always be on message all the time. I would say be on message most of the time. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, put something off topic or funny or interesting. That'll get you some activity, uh, some views and so forth, and then that snowballs into more follows and that sort of thing. There was actually something, one more thing I wanted to share regarding that. If you see what's the easiest way to pull it up. This is something that we posted on Twitter. We'll do it this way. If you go to twitter.com slash PMD Interactive, so that's, that's uh, my company, twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. We're going to scroll down. Let me find it for you. We're going to scroll down. We tweeted something about something called SMO. You've heard of SEO. SMO, Social Media Optimization, SEO, Search Engine Optimization, SMO. It's just another term for something you might have already heard before, but that's the buzzword. I'm going to scroll down here, and I'll tell you... Um, you want to scroll down to find June 21st. So we post a lot of useful things about marketing and social media and uh, blogging and so forth. We found this. We found this. We didn't write this ourselves. We found it. And then we shared it on Twitter. So scroll down to June 21st. Uh, the tweet is called, What is SMO? Develop your social media strategy in eight steps. So follow that link. And you'll see this blog post. Create a social media style guide. Pick a platform. Assign responsibilities, etc. So you can get that over on our Twitter.
twitter.com slash PMD Interactive and just scroll down to June 21st and you'll get that that we found. That might help you then with Tumblr or WordPress or Twitter or whatever, creating a strategy for social media. So any general questions on anything we've talked about Tumblr today or other stuff from other days?